All right, I'm going to demonstrate how to import a movie into Logger Pro and how to collect data from that video. And this is a 2D motion problem. First thing I'm going to do is insert movie. Now, if this menu item is grayed out, that means you don't have QuickTime loaded on your computer. You have to have QuickTime loaded in order for Logger Pro to work properly. So QuickTime is loaded, so we're going to insert the movie. I'm going to go to where I stored it. Just as a note, the first time I tried this and I ran the video, instead of coming up with a nice picture here, it was blank. And so what I did is I resaved the video in a different format to see if that would work. Seeing as this program is written to work with uh, QuickTime, I actually saved it as a .mov file, a QuickTime style file. One other thing you should do, when you insert the video, if it's really small on your screen, if it only captures a certain segment of your screen, then you should expand it using these corner dragging bars to fill your whole window because you want to see as much of the frame as possible. Next thing you want to do is show your video analysis tools. And if you look down at the bottom right corner right here, um, there's a little menu I can click. A series of toolbars came up right here. And we're going to use those tools to actually collect our video data. Before we start, it's really important to do a few things. First of all, if we go into Options, Movie Options, we're going to start our first video analysis point. We're going to define that as time zero. So it's really important to do, otherwise everything's going to be time shifted, which can be a little bit of a pain, so don't do that. So I clicked on the first VA point, uh, defines time zero. There's some other options here you could look at and potentially use in the future, but that's all I really need to do for now. Next thing you want to do is really want to start your movie where you would like to start recording data. And I'm going to just hit play so you can see the movie real quick. And uh, there's a lot of stuff up front which is just useless. And then I just toss a few balls into this basket. And you can see how the different sized balls have different, uh, different colors, have more or less uh, contrast uh, and better view of how to pull out the video capture data. And I think I'll just use the, the first ball, the red ball, to capture that motion. So I'm going to stop it here where I first throw it. Alright, and I can just use the reverse to back this up in time. And I'm going to back it up just to the point where it leaves my hands. And let's see. Right there is my, I'm going to call that my, I'll call that my release point. So that's going to be the first frame of my video. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to create an XY axis in my, and if you hold your cursor over these buttons, it'll show you what each one of them does. I'm going to set the origin. And I think I'll set the origin on the ground level, right below where the ball is. And here's the Y axis, here's the X axis. Now if you did have a video that was rotated, or if you were running down a ramp or something, you can actually drag on this and you can actually rotate your axes, which is um, pretty useful when you're in those types of situations. And you'll notice when I selected this, you'll see it comes down to the bottom of my reference length here. This is a four foot level I put in the frame. You could also do something like use your height, but you notice I'm stooped over a little bit here. Um, but if I was standing up straight, I could just select my whole height here and uh, put in five foot ten for that height. I'm actually going to set the scale using this tool. It's a little ruler tool. And I'm going to go over to this four foot reference height I put in here. And it can be any length that you want, like I said. This, for example, the, the canoe in this picture is about 17 feet long, but at the, end, the tip is uh, cut off, so that doesn't help. So I'm going to change this to four feet. And once I select my units here, it will also flow into my rest of my program. Everything will be done in feet now. Hit OK. All right, so I've got my axes, I've got my scale set, and I know that this will fit in the frame nicely. So the next thing to do is to actually start collecting data points. And all we need to do to start that is to go up to here to add points. And I'm going to go to my ball, and I'm going to try to select every point at the center of the ball. And I click, and it moves to the next frame, and it adds a point. I center it, click, and it automatically moves to the next point. I continue to do that for the entire path. Now there are settings you can use. For example, I was I did a Canopy Lake Park, the Pirata, and that 
I put in about 5,000 points for that. So if you have a situation where it's going to give you a huge number of data points, you can actually, in the setup window, you could tell it to skip every third point or something like that, and it would reduce the number of data points you need to collect. So I'm just going to add all these points in here, and I'm trying to center the ball each time. And you notice this video turned out nicely. I did this outside. And overcast cloud conditions, which is nice for lighting actually. And I have a fairly good contrast background. There's a little bit of clutter in the background here, but it, it's um, easy to see this object against this background. The faster an object moves, the blurrier it will be. And in that case, you'll have to decide where in that blur you want to select your point, either at the beginning of the blur or the end of the blur or someplace in the middle. If you have an, a strange object flying through the air, what you want to track is this object's center of mass. And you'll find that the center of mass moves in a parabolic trajectory as well. All right, now it's going to bounce off the basket here. Actually, move to the right. Bounces up. I'll throw this data in so we can see this is still once it bounces off the basket, it continues to free fall. Now, if I move this out of the way, or I can just click on one of these windows in the background, you'll notice that it plotted one graph of, of position versus time, both in the x and y directions. The other thing you might want to look at at the same time, you'll notice we can adjust these windows. It also, based on these data points, it takes these position and time coordinates and actually does a little calculation to um, average out the velocity between the two points. And you can actually back into those calculations to see how it's done. And you can actually, since these data points exist, you can actually plot those as well. And I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to insert a graph, and it automatically picked for me the velocity. And on the graph options, I can actually select what to plot on here. And I'll plot both x and y on this. Done. And I'm going to stretch these both out so we can see them at the same time, one on top of the other, just like we used to draw those in class. I can about devote about half the window to each of these. So there's a position versus time motion graph in both x and y dimensions, and a velocity versus time both x and y dimensions. And that's how easy it is to collect data using LogarPro.